What do you think about the Vikings halfway through now uh, with some time off before they play Kansas City? Um, obviously, if uh, Green Bay loses in Kansas City on Sunday evening, the two teams will be tied record-wise atop the NFC North. The uh, Packers still have the tiebreaker, but of course the Vikings and Packers will play later this season at U.S. Bank Stadium. want to get to some talking points here off individual players too, Danny. Um, starting with Stefan Diggs, the guy that you just heard the quote from. Do you have, so I'll start with this and, and then work to what he's done so well. Do you have any concern at all, or are you with Collar and thinking it's completely random that he has now fumbled four times this year and lost three? I don't think it's completely random. I'm not willing to go that far. I don't have a, a ton of concern. Like, I don't think that this is Adrian P- Peterson fumble problems. Last night did look like an ode to Peterson. I tweeted that. It was, he was it trying like to a, honor him. Adrian, this is for you. Bang. Which, in that, if that's the case, then it's certainly not a problem because then you really take away a fumble off of his, his line and then it's okay. But I, I don't think it's a huge problem to be concerned about, but it's also not nothing, right? This is something that it's, it's reared its ugly head so a few what is times. It? It's something, but I wouldn't consider it a major issue. Like, I don't think that Stefan Diggs is going to fumble every game. That's not what I, I feel is going to happen. But I do think that it's something that if you want to have a gripe with last night, it's something that you can have a gripe that should be cleaned up because you can't afford that type of play against a good team. Now, against Washington, you can't. But against a good team, say it was Chicago where that happened, which it did happen. It did happen. That's it where it could Detroit. cost you a game. Yes. But last night, it's it's not a huge concern. I'm not willing to call it random the way Matthew is, but I, I don't think it's the biggest deal in the world either. Now, here are the stats for uh, Stefan Diggs in the first four games, but before he went AWOL from the team for two days, then came back after being fined more than $200,000. And this is the eye-opening thing. So Stefan Diggs, first four games, Vikings go two and two. They beat Atlanta. They barely throw the ball. They beat Oakland. Uh, They lose at Green Bay in that heartbreaker where actually that last pick that was um, that was thrown in the end zone by Cousins, that really poor pass was thrown into double coverage for uh, Stefan Diggs. And then they lose, obviously, at Chicago. Stefan Diggs first four games, 19 targets, 13 receptions, 209 yards, one touchdown. All right. That's four games. And that's where he I I think from his sick from his. Yeah. And his usage. And also how the team was um, approaching the offense basically said, I'm so sick, I can't show up for work. You people are crazy. Cough, cough. Diggs' last four games, including last night's win over Washington, the targets have gone from 19 in the first four games to 30 in that time. The receptions have gone from 13 for the first four games to the last four games, he's caught 24 passes. It's quite an uptick. The yards have gone from 209 to 486. And the touchdowns have gone from one to three. And so to circle back to the point I made in the first segment, this is what I'm talking about of the common sense here. Forcing the ball to Stefan Diggs in double coverage in Green Bay on a dumb play call that the quarterback couldn't possibly make that pass because, well, he just couldn't is a bad idea. Yeah. But there are times that you can definitely get the ball to Diggs. And I think you might be right. I think we might say, depending on how things end, for 2019 i think there might come a day where we really do say that this season changed largely not based on what a coach said not based on what a win itself but based on the fact that this guy who is a who is a number one marquee receiver no questions asked um stood up and said guys we got to throw the ball didn't show up to work we and it changed, it changed the season for the better, Judd. But he didn't show up to work. Ordinarily, we talk about how that doesn't work, how that sabotages a locker oh, room, it, right? It, it is classified as conduct detrimental to the team, and guys get suspended and fined. And Stefan Diggs did get fined. But you know what? I think that that $200,000 that the Vikings fined him was well worth it at this point because it has changed this season for the better. Now, I think that they probably... I don't know that they win their next four if that doesn't happen, but they they certainly turn it around in some extent, even with that happening, because the New York Giants are probably a, a cure for a little bit of things. But right. But if you go in, if you go into the MetLife Stadium and you run the football, you just run, run, run that game. You still win. I you think. still win that game. But I don't. But but it doesn't solve. But it doesn't. The one good thing the Giants game did was I think it set you up to say, OK, now you can see an offensive path to victory. Mm hmm. As opposed to, okay, Dalvin Cook's really good. He can run the ball, but what happens when? 
Yeah. You know, because going into the going into that Bears game, that was our question. OK, you're going to play the Bears. What happens now? What are you going to do? And they didn't have an answer. Yeah. And Cousins folded. And and now, in retrospect, it's probably fair to say the coaching staff folded, right? Everybody folded. Yeah. And so we came away saying, yeah, yeah that, that's because what you're doing doesn't necessarily work. And Stefan Diggs said, yeah, it doesn't work. And I'm not showing up for this crap because I'm being paid a lot to catch footballs. And then there is uh, this guy uh, from last night. He had a great game in Detroit. We barely talked about it. And then last night again, he was very good. Third down and goal. They give it to Cook. And he got there. Touchdown. Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook last night, Danny Cunningham. 98 yards, 23 carries, and the touchdown that you heard all of our friends here in the Twin Cities, Joe Buck call. Uh, five receptions for 73 yards. And I saw this was uh, tweeted out today um, by ESPN. Cook is now on pace for this season, 1,646 rushing yards, 586 receiving yards, and 18 touchdowns. Right now, he's averaging more than five yards per rush attempt and 10 yards per catch. And in watching Peterson play last night, and God bless him, he caught two passes. But in watching Peterson play last night, that's the difference here. Peterson's your old school. I'm going to run, run, run. I'm going to, you know, if I have to. and. I, I saw him block once last night. So good for you. Adrian, you're 34. You're learning. But all of that being said, Dalvin Cook now is such an updated. It's it's as if it's as if the Vikings had a, a running back app and it said run the 2019 update or 2018 update. And software they ran update. the software update. And now they've got a running back. And I saw him drop the pass last night. I get it. He's got to look the ball into his hands. But nonetheless, now they've got an updated back who can do all of those things that we basically used to complain about. Well, Adrian can run really well, but he can't do these other things. Adrian Peterson is a CD. Dalvin Cook is Spotify. Yeah, that's perfect. Absolutely. <laughs> and you know what? Spotify's got some problems, but it's damn good most of the time. Mm -hmm. you Very know. convenient, and it's caught up with the times. And this guy, when you watch him, and the most impressive thing to me is Sunday especially, but in recent weeks, we basically now are like, of course he had a big game. Yeah. yeah, of course he did. On Sunday, we barely talked about him because Cousins is playing well and the passing game is operating again efficiently, or I should say for the first time in 2019 efficiently. But when he has that game, we barely talk about it now because we're starting to take for granted how good this guy is. Well, I think part of the reason we didn't really talk about him last week against Detroit was because of what Cousins did through the air. And sure. But even when the scores were, Kirk Cousins was making the big plays for them to get in the end zone, where last night they only scored one touchdown. And yes, Dalvin Cook had a big game, so he's going to be more part of that because it was a lower scoring game. When you look at higher scoring games, you're going to lean on the side of, oh, if they scored 42 points as they did against Detroit or 45 or whatever it was, the passing game must have been great. And it was. So you don't necessarily have to look much deeper than that to see what Dalvin Cook did, even though Dalvin Cook was very good then. Mm -hmm. We're halfway through the season, and Dalvin Cook has 1,116 yards from scrimmage. Oh, it's it's fantastic. It's everything. He's been incredible. It's every, and and this, this goes to our conversations probably in April, May, June, and July about the fact that this guy is the guy who, if he can play a full year, is going to be fantastic. We knew this. We knew he was going to be great. He's shown it before. But the only problem was, year one, he tears his knee up. Yep. Year two, in week two at Green Bay, because of, of the knee problem, he came back uh, fairly quickly from it. He hurts his hamstring. But how many times did everyone in this town, every Vikings fan, talk about the fact, if Dalvin Cook can play 16 games, Dalvin Cook is, he, I'm convinced he is the guy that if you chose an offensive marquee for this team, I think Diggs is second. I think Cook is first. I really do. I think his versatility, his abilities, all of those things that if you were to say, if you were to try and sell a Vikings ticket plan, I would say, come watch Dalvin Cook. Is he an MVP candidate? I think he probably, I think he probably is. No. Why not? Because he doesn't play quarterback. The only MVP oh, candidates in this league are quarterbacks. But that's flawed. I, I'm not saying it's not, but it's true. Well, he should be. 
okay, that's fine, but Kirk that's Cousins, a different argument. Kirk Cousins has gotten into the conversation, at least after Detroit, I started to see that. I think Pro Football Talk floated that Cousins name. Kirk Cousins is not in the conversation as far as I'm concerned, as much as Dalvin Cook is. No, I but guess, I guess that's the that's more so the question I was asking is should he be an MVP? Yes, candidate? I think he should be. I think Dalvin Cook is the team MVP for sure. Yep. But he's not going to be in the league MVP I conversation because he's not a quarterback. That's just how it works. And it's flawed, but I don't You're disagree wrong. at all. But yes, I think if, if we were to be impartial, if if the voters were to come to us and say, okay, you watched every game, we didn't. What do you think? I would say if I was to vote, I'd vote Delvin Cook first, not Kirk Cousins. And Kirk Cousins has been great. And Kirk Cousins is doing exactly what Kirk Cousins is asked to do. And last night, his efficiency was off the charts. He wasn't spectacular. He didn't need to be. They didn't need to be spectacular last night. But I give Kirk Cousins a lot of credit. But if, you know, Madison looks like a good player. But if Delvin Cook gets hurt against Kansas City, Think about how much different we probably consider this offense Mm -hmm. and cousins too, because you can't go to Sean Mannion. I understand that as well, but if Dalvin cook, but as far as, as far as the, the pieces, the skill position pieces, if Dalvin cook goes out, Alexander Madison's a nice player. And I don't, and I don't think the team becomes awful, but I think the dynamic portion is, is really, really hurt because all of these, all of the success, this Cousins play action and respecting digs down the field and respecting the pass game, all of that starts with Dalvin Cook. Yeah. Dalvin Cook is the reason why the offense has been so good. I understand yep. Kirk Cousins has played better. I get your as point. Late, but Dalvin Cook is the reason why yes. he's been able to do that. Yes. And and it drives me nuts when people come back and say, oh, play action. And, ah, we can prove it's not that. No, it's it's great. But what you have to have is a great player. Yes, and they do. So if I'm faking a handoff to C.J. Ham, guess what? They ain't biting. Dalvin Cook, they're biting. Are you uh, are you buying or selling this from Kirk Cousins last night? No, I you know I, I think you know that that we 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 won the game and that's all that matters and that's all my focus is on and uh, uh, they they were a, a tremendous place to go to work for six years and I just had the best of memories of my time there. You know, I'm I'm just happy we won. You know, I'm just I'm just thrilled that we won the game. That's what it's all about. Kirk Cousins last night, I, I asked the question, and I asked him twice because the first response he basically gave me the old, ah, yeah, it's great to win. Are you buying that this game didn't mean more to Kirk? Because I am not buying any of this stuff about the the guy that he played with in Philadelphia, the since released linebacker who ripped him, and him saying that was no big deal. And now this, I am not buying it at all. I think for Kirk, this was a huge deal. Anytime that you get to face a former franchise that you played with, a group of guys that you played with, or or just structurally that organization, the front office, the coaches, and I understand that there's been some turnover there, but of course it's going to mean a little bit more to you. Of course it's going to. There's no question about that. So no, I'm not buying what Kirk said there. And And you factor in the fact that Kirk wanted to get a long-term contract there and never got it from them like multiple years in a row they basically franchised him right and said yeah, we're two not, years in a row yep. yeah they're they're not going they basically said we're not going to give you a long term deal because we don't there was never a point where they viewed him as a long term answer at quarterback so i got to imagine that stung him a little bit at least a little bit well absolutely it's not a lot absolutely well yeah. and do, don't forget too the famous quote is do you like that right or you you, you like, like that, that you like that that's that's the famous Cousins quote in Washington. But there was the quote a year or two after that where he went up to the GM on the field and said, what, how, how do you like me now or something? He went up to the Washington GM on the field and confronted him and because ba- he's mad. Yeah. So to say that, to look at that team, which is a dumpster fire, what now, one and seven? Yes. An absolute really, dumpster really fire. Really and seven. Yes, they are. Well, they're they beat yeah, Miami. Yeah, a team that, that should be, Miami wins should not count for your 